Shot Show adalah pameran industri senjata api yang sangat bergengsi. Acara ini berlangsung di Las Vegas, Amerika Serikat. Shot Show diikuti oleh bermacam-macam perusahaan baik perusahaan lokal Amerika maupun perusahaan internasional. Salah satu perusahaan internasional yang hadir adalah PT Pindad, asal Indonesia. Kehadiran Pindad pada Shit Show 2024 merupakan kebanggaan tersendiri bagi masyarakat Indonesia. Di event ini, Pindad memamerkan 8 produk andalannya. Kedelapan produk ini disusun dalam e-katalog Kian Apik. Katalog dibuka dengan pernyataan yang sangat tegas. Welcoming the strongest nation in Southeast Asia. Namun seperti apakah tanggapan dari para gun entusias di Amerika Serikat? Edisi ini kita akan membahas tanggapan dari platform YouTube. Hi guys, so we were walking down the aisle and we found this really cool booth we had to stop by. This is Pindad and I'm talking to Fahirin. Yes, this is How's Fahirin going, from BTP Pindad. Welcome. So, uh, I mean, we just saw these were very uh, interesting looking firearms you had out. And uh, one of them caught our eye, the amphibious that you have a poster of on the front. But yes. we're going to go through a couple different firearms today with you, right? Okay. All right. Yeah. So, in this year, BTP Pindad uh, is putting an effort to penetrate into the U.S. market, mm -hmm. especially for the civilian uh, firearm enthusiast market. Okay. And in this year, SHOT Show 2024, we bring some of the models that may be uh, interesting to the U.S. market, okay. especially civilian market. So we'll start from this one. We call it SP-1. Okay. SP-1 in Indonesia. SP-1 is Senapan Panjang Satu or Long Rifle Model 1. Okay. Uh, it was originally uh, manufactured by PT Pinet in 1960s as the program for Indonesian uh, indigenous rifle. Mm -hmm. This is this was used by the Indonesian Army back in the 60s, 70s, and the 80s. And in the year 2020s, we developed a sporter model of this SP-1 and we came up with this one. Okay. It is a semi-automatic chambered in 762 by 51 millimeter and it is perfect for sporting and shooting long ranges. Okay. Yeah, it's very reminiscent of like, uh, you know, an M14, uh, 308 caliber. I mean, it's definitely, uh, I think that you would have a lot of appeal to American markets with that firearm. It originally came from the design of BM-59 because back in the 60s, our army got the license to produce BM-59 and actually PT Peanut was part of the army back in the 60s and in the 80s we became a state-owned company so we became the company at the 80s with all the knowledge all the drawings of this rifle from the army so we can manufacture this rifle by ourselves. So just for the viewers out there who might not be familiar with it, the Italian BM-59 was developed by Italy after World War II, kind of modifying grants to feed from a box mag in 308 or 762 by 51 NATO. And it, it's interesting that they were able to develop it so much faster than we ended up developing the fairly similar M14 rifle. But it's very interesting to see that kind of lineage where, you know, the American Grand went to Italy, they developed the BM-59, the BM-59 came to Indonesia. That's yes. interesting. Yes, sir. Yes, that's correct. All right. So we'll continue with the next model the model this is uh, PM1 mm -hmm. or in Indonesian pistol mitral year one okay or submachine gun model one it was a submachine gun because this was used by the Indonesian army in the 60s and the 70s mm -hmm. as one of their uh, arsenal mm -hmm. and it originally has a forward grip and a butt stock folding butt stock but since we are taking these uh, firearms to the U.S. for sporting purposes, mm -hmm. so we remove the forward grip and the folding belt stock in order to apply with the NFA rules. Yep. And we converted the full automatic uh, function mm -hmm. of this firearm to semi-automatic only in order to comply with the U.S. rules here. And we are now in the process of converting the open bolt mechanism to close bolt so it will not be considered as machine gun anymore so it will be 
clearly legal in the U.S. Yep. So, I mean, it's got that very distinctive look, that tube look of, you know, like very simple blowback operated submachine guns, simple similar blowback. to like a Sten or something. Yes, um, and yeah, I, I mean, it's certainly there could be some engineering uh, challenges when it comes to converting yeah. those systems yeah. to a closed bolt hammer fired system. But unfortunately, that's what's required. The uh, ATF considers basically any open bolt uh, firearm now to be readily convertible to a machine gun. <laughs> um, but it's got a really cool retro look. I love the appearance and aesthetic it of the pistol. Sad. It is there. We're still building this firearm up until now. In fact, that in Indonesia it is still used mm -hmm. by the Indonesian police, especially the Forest Guard. It is still being used up until this day. All right. Still in active service. That, that's excellent. That's great lifetime service. Um, what's our next one on the table here? On the next one, we have SS1C. Mm -hmm. SS1 carbine. Uh, back in the 80s, the Indonesian army has uh, had an if effort to update its arsenal from this gun right here, mm -hmm. the M59 or SP1, to the uh, more effective 556 rounds. And in the 80s and in the 90s, we received a full transfer of technology from FN Herstal, mm -hmm. 100% transfer of technology. Starting from the design, the processes, all the information about the materials, everything. And we successfully design and manufacture SS1 rifle. SS1 stands for Snapan Serbu Satu, or Assault Rifle Model 1, because okay. it was an assault rifle right. used by the Army Infantry. But now we are bringing this rifle to the America for civilian purposes for uh, sport shooting, yep. for hunting, and it still uses the original FN design, FN processes, everything. So it is basically an FNC, Indonesian version of FNC. Mm -hmm. Because as far as I know, in the world, there are only two countries in the world who receive the full transfer of technology from FN Herstal. The first one is Sweden, uh, which they came up with AK-5, and the second was is Indonesia with this rifle right here. This gun right here, SS1. Okay. So yeah, I mean, obviously it's, it does have a kind of distinctive, almost 80s kind of aesthetic yeah. to it. Uh, I mean, it, I think it looks really, uh, really interesting. And it's interesting to see that, you know, you still have that pedigree. Like, you know, we talked about the Italian heritage there. Now we have the Belgian heritage from FN. Yeah. Uh, so again, you know, I think there's a lot of people out there who would like to collect historic rifles that it's hard to get a hold of those things. And to be able to kind of buy a modern manufactured rifle that's based off of some of these designs is really cool. Yes, yes, sir. And this will be available within this year. This yeah. year? This right. year. You can get one of these within this year. Now, I noticed though you don't have a stock on here. Obviously, the barrel does look quite long enough. Uh, so are these being imported as pistols or this rifles? This was imported as pistols. Okay. Imported as pistols to the U.S. Okay. So for those of you who are out there and maybe not know, uh, sometimes it's easier to import a pistol than a rifle because rifles and shotguns have to comply with a import restriction on foreign manufactured parts. Pistols do not. So it may just be that it was easier to import as a pistol so we didn't have to worry about those kind of compliance part issues. But uh, that's absolutely really amazing. And I, you know, once it's uh, over here, then uh, the end consumer can do some work and, and convert that to a rifle, legally speaking. Um, it will require some parts replacement, but that's, I mean, again, I think that would be a slick shooter once uh, we try to put a stock on there. This will be available in three different metal lengths configuration. Okay. This is the C version or the carbon version. And we have another two, other two uh, variation of this rifle here, uh, these firearms. Uh, we have the SS1M or medium, mm -hmm. and we have SS1S, uh, the shorty. So it will come in three different barrel, barrel uh, line configuration. All right, that's really cool. So you almost have like a submachine gun or CQB size. CQB. And then you kind of have the, what would maybe be for a military, a standard issue, and then yeah. the longer barrel. Yes. That's really cool. Yes, sir. That's correct. All right. Okay. We'll continue with the next one here. So back in 2004 until 2006, uh, the Indonesian Army wants us to upgrade their arsenal again. And it's, it's almost a constant <laughs> process with militaries around the world, right? Like, yeah, yeah. And we upgraded and developed SS1, hmm? become SS2, 
SS2, Snap-on Silver Dua uh, Assault Rifle Model 2. Okay. And this one right here is the pistol caliber version of SS2 firearms. Okay. Uh, it uses uh, 9 by 19 parabellum ammunition mm -hmm. and it comes with standard MP5 magazine you can buy everywhere. Yeah. Very cheap, you can find everywhere. Yeah, they're very popular kind of uh, very model. Popular kind of and it has a flip up iron sight. Mm -hmm. And those will come with it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It comes as standard. Okay. And you can mount any kind of optics on top of a Picatinny rail. I think that's a simple, simple design, robust, and it's proven. Yeah. And 9mm uh, kind of sub guns but semi-automatic only of course super popular you know there's a uh, quite a lot of offerings in that market but you know again this is be something that's very interesting because of that heritage and and, and stuff um so yeah i mean uh, definitely nine millimeter uh nine millimeter. fantastic okay next up we have uh this is one of our greatest creation mm -hmm. this is SS Amphibious. So that's what we kind of caught our eye here on the on the poster out front. Yeah. So yeah, definitely take us through this one. SS Amphibious or Snap-on Serbu Amphibious. Amphibious Assault Rifle. This, as the name says, it can fire and operate uh, perfectly mm -hmm. in both environments, on land and underwater. Sure. So, all the operators need to do is change the magazine. Okay. For example, the operator has two magazines. Okay. The operator shoot the gun on land, right. and once you want uh, to dive underwater, just change the magazine, which installed with uh, underwater ammunition. Okay, I got you. So, these firearms can shoot regular 5.56 ammunition, mm -hmm. as well as underwater ammunition, specially designed and manufactured by us, TT Peanut, mm -hmm. in Indonesia. So, will the ammunition be being imported as well? Of course. Okay. <laughs> of course. And what makes it special is that this lever right here, mm -hmm. When you want to shoot it on land, you just put it this way. Okay. And when you want to shoot it underwater, you pull it up. Okay. That opens, that opens the gas chamber, and it makes the uh, the return of the gas uh, stronger and bigger. Okay. So it will cycle, cycle the bolt and makes you ready to fire again. So yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Obviously with being underwater, you have a greater resistance to the moving parts, uh, actually reciprocating there within the action. So having to get a little bit more gas and you know, maybe the, uh, the underwater ammunition, you know, you're, you're designed to produce a little bit more gas to make sure that it's reliably cycling fully yeah. each time. The only issue was the cycle, but we came up with an idea, this one right here, the lever. So that's really cool. And again, it's got a very kind of a, an HK aesthetic to it, uh, similar to this one. Um, I think, uh, you know, both of these look sort of reminiscent of HK style firearms. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to go through this line of products. I think it's really exciting to hear about a, a new company importing into the U.S. And uh, especially with some of these kind of uh, options that are, are like classic designs that are going to be new manufactured options to get those classic designs into collectors hands um, again the sp1 i think that looks fantastic i'd love to get one of those things myself yeah but uh uh far, far enough, i appreciate your time today sir i, I hope you're having a great show yes sir. yes thank you very much